This new hunter exotic brings an on-demand buff that can change the landscape of what a god roll weapon looks like. Specifically for fusion rifles, it takes must-have perks for the different archetypes off the table and opens the door for something new. Do you like 15% extra damage in PvP? How about overshield in PvE? How about all of it? On demand whenever you'd like. I give you Jerfalcon's Haberg. Originally, I thought I was going to be neck deep in Arc 3.0 content at this point, and then Season of Plunder brought with it Jerfalcon's, which just so happens to line up with one of the strongest playstyles in PvP and one of the saving graces of your last man standings in GMs. I'll go over some of the basics real quick for PvE and PvP and then deep dive into how this thing is changing the way I look at weapons for this season. Seriously, some crazy stuff y'all. In PvE, after you use a finisher while in Viz, your Falcons gives you and your teammates nearby a reserve overshield. This reserve void overshield can then be activated individually whenever that guardian uses their class ability. Finishing while in Viz also increases your class ability recharge rate so that you can use your class ability very quickly after getting the finish. In both PvE and PvP, coming out of Invis grants you a damage buff for a 2 second timer. In PvP, this is a 15% damage buff like High Energy Fire or Empowering Rift, and in PvE, the amount is even higher, around a 35% damage buff. Just for reference, the Jur in Jur Falcon is derived from the Latin word gyrus, which means circle or curved path for the way that Jur Falcon circles its prey. Which is fitting for how this exotic works, going invis, finding the right approach, and unleashing a devastating blow. Now, what can we do with the abilities this chess piece gives us? In PvP? <laughs> oh man, in PvP. Remember how insane Lorely Splendor Helm was for Titans when people realized you had an on-demand weapon buff? That the change to make it based off of your ability wasn't a nerf but a buff because you could use it whenever you wanted? That's essentially what this is. Just a reined in version. It's 15% instead of the 20%, but it happens while you're coming out of invis instead of being stuck in that barricade animation and it happens a lot more naturally. Now, 15% damage boost, we can do a lot with that. It changes the time to kill of weapons across the field, but let's take a second to talk about what kind of buff this is because that'll determine how we can stack it with other buffs. This is an empowering buff, or a guardian buff as I like to call it, just like a rift or a lorely used to be. So it'll take the place or be replaced by any charge with light buffs or anything else that's classified as that. But you can still stack weapon buffs on top of this. Kill clip, harmony, that's all fair game. So my mind immediately jumped to my harmony builds. I just showcased the one shot bow when combined with high energy fire, or the two tap from something new hand cannon, or even the one shot from the yeet machine. Instead of using radiant, you could use this and still get that one shot at any resilience. And yes, this does work for all that. But there are some reasons why I'm going to recommend something else. Drafalcons has some real quirks to it. Number one, that two second timer goes by fast. And number two, your first shot out of invis is usually from while you're still invis. You don't normally just naturally come out of invis, you normally are taking a shot to come out of invis and you have to remember that that first shot will not get the damage buff. So in order for it to work for you with normal weapons, you'd have to pre-shoot to get out of invis, the enemy's gonna know where you are, and then you'd have to shoot again for the buff to proc. That's not ideal. Could it be helpful? Sure, especially on burst fire, auto fire weapons like autos, pulses, sidearms, and SMGs, where that very first bullet doesn't matter as much. But it's pretty clear this thing was made for fusion rifles. On your pre-charge for a fusion or linear fusion rifle, you come out of the invis and the damage perk activates before your bolts fire. It's honestly perfect. It's like in Avengers when the Hulk puts on the Infinity Gauntlet and he realizes it's it's made of gamma radiation, it's like it was made for me, and that's kind of how I feel actually, I feel like this exotic was made for me, but really this exotic does feel like it was made for fusion rifles. Now what does that 15% damage do when it's translated to the different archetypes of fusion rifles? It does a lot. Everyone's already talking about this thing with Arbalist or Lawrence, but I don't completely understand the hype because that's only letting you body shot up to 4 resilience. 
Most Guardians are running at least five these days. The few matches I went in to test this with Arbalance, literally everyone in the match was running five Brazil. I couldn't pull off any one shots at all. And I feel like the chances that you're gonna be able to are probably gonna be about the same. Maybe there'll be one or two, but for the most part, it's not gonna happen. So let's put that aside. If that's the only info you wanted, that's cool. But here's where the gold's at. This is where I really wanna focus today because this is what I feel like Drafalcon was made for. We can take pretty much any archetype of legendary fusion rifle and make it do something that it couldn't do before. With rapid fires, we've pretty much undone the nerf that was given to them. Right now, they require eight bolts to kill at six Resil or above, which is pretty common, but with your Falcons, you can seven bolt at any resilience level. No need for liquid coils, no need for high impact reserves, just seven bolt any resilience out of invis. This immediately made weapons like Riptide feel so much more consistent. I was doing a Riptide review before I went into this coming season, and then I put it on for this, and it was just like, uh, okay, this is a whole other gun now. With Adaptive, you don't have to worry about needing high impact reserves. Usually, it needs 6 bolts to kill it 7 Rezil or up, but with your Falcons, it's 5 every time. 5 bolts across the board. So you can go for perks in that last column like successful warm-up on Burden of Guilt without feeling like you're missing out. For Precision Frame Fusions, you might think you don't really need anything here. You're already 5 bolting at any resilience, so what does it matter? Well, how about going for all charge time perks on your new Adept Plug 1 and still hitting that 5 bolt kill at every resilience level? Charge time masterwork, accelerated coils, plus the Adept charge time, that thing is insanely fast and now you're doing it without changing your bolts to kill. Maybe you just wanted to run accelerated coils on your Epicurean from the crafted guide we just did a video on. Sure, you can do it without hurting your bolts to kill thanks to this damage boost. For high impacts, this again may not seem like much since you're already 3 bolting up to 9 Resil, but the mobile on demand 15% damage buff from your Falcons lets you do one very cool thing that I haven't been able to do since we lost the Laurelly Splendor buff. We can break the range cap on fusions again. On demand. I'm just going to keep saying that. On demand, because that's what this is about. Since your Falcons is an empowering buff, we can stack an immediate weapon buff like Kickstart's 20% damage buff to get a 38% total weapon buff immediately for free. This lets high impacts do 88.3 a bolt, a total of 441.5 damage if you land all 5 bolts. This amount of damage will negate the damage fall off at any range by still hitting for 220 damage if you land all 5 bolts. I pulled it off already in the one night of having this many times, so that alone tells you it's something to look out for. Did you hear me? I already did this. It's not like a challenge like, hey, this is crazy, you can do this. Like I went into a match and did it immediately. It's, it's that insane. Okay, craziness aside, obviously this is a 15% damage buff that can be applied to anything in PvP. There are endless ways to stack this and use it and build with it. I just wanted to showcase how it works specifically for fusions due to the delay in activation and how it flips all the archetypes upside down with what perks you might want to roll with it. Just for example, I had a huge success in running Killing Wind and successful warm-up on my Adept Burn and Guilt because I didn't have to run high impact reserves, and it was already really good, but this exotic made it hella good. It was incredible. I want to reiterate too, for PvE, this thing could be a lifesaver. On demand 35% damage that you can stack with other things, and you can stack with a debuff plus an on demand overshield if you prep for it for the whole team. I think there's some interaction going on there that's worth diving more into in the future, but I, I really wanted to get this guide out and I'd done a deep dive on the PvP side, so wanted to get that part out first. Thank you everyone for joining me on this deep dive. I can't wait to dive into the rest of Arc 3.0. It's just that this chest was dropping from the Lost Sector the very first day had to get it and then lo and behold it was just the perfect pairing for fusion rifles it's made it really hard to cover all the arc 3.0 stuff at the same time because i had to run something entirely different but honestly this is so good bungie why why are you making me play with something else i just want to use the new pretty arc abilities and i promise y'all we're gonna get to those too if you stick with me i'd love for you to follow along here on youtube on twitter on tiktok heck i even started a youtube shorts channel if you don't like tiktok but you want all this information super fast without the deep dive you can check that out i'll have the link in the description either way thanks for enjoying destiny with me until next time gg